number one plant estrogenics, phytoestrogen. So there was a big study done looking at estrogens in plants, and they looked at over 100 different plant foods, I mean all kinds of really interesting plants, and the only ones that were even remotely high in estrogens was soy and flax. Mm. Now, smoking cannabis, like the actual smoke from cannabis, can be estrogenic, and you see the, fer the fertility issues with chronic cannabis smokers. Not eating cannabis, but smoking it. But basically, with the foods, soy and flax. Yeah. They're in okay. the hundreds of thousands of, of, of micrograms. All the other foods were under 1,000. So how many? How much, how much tofu do you have to eat to be effective? Not that much. Yeah. Now, if you're fermenting it, like natto or soy sauce. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just the numbers, right? Like all the foods on that study, they were under 1,000. Okay. Forget the units for a second. They were just under 1,000 micrograms per 100. Um, soy was over 100,000. And flax was over 300,000. Wow. And most people don't pig out on flax. Yeah. But there's a lot of people that eat a lot of soy. Tons. Just substantial Every amounts. Yeah. Yep. yep. And that's a concern to me, mm -hmm. especially in the long term. You're not, again, you might not see an immediate health impact. But, yeah, I mean, the the soy sauce was under 100. Oh, okay. So 100,000 to 100, right. like fermentation, those mm. bacteria break these down. And tempeh? And that, tempeh, same thing. Yeah. Okay, as okay. Long so as it's fermentation kind of helps break down that estrogenic yeah, quality. Yeah. Okay, and interesting. And the trick, the difficulty in America is oftentimes these production companies cheat yeah. the process and they don't actually do fermentation. Mm. They just mimic it. Oh, okay. Shoot. And you have to be careful to get actually fermented stuff. Yeah. And that's true in general, right? Mm. But assuming that, the fermented products are probably downright healthy for you because yeah. some of the breakdown products, when the bacteria get a hold of these estrogens, these natural ones, so they've seen these natural ones before, they break them down, and some of those products that, the, that are the result of the breakdown, those are healthy for you. Mm. Great. So if you have good gut bacteria, it's one thing. Mm -hmm. And again, these are natural, so they're a little bit different than most of the rest of the list. Yeah, okay, cool. So um, even having a soy latte a month, is that? are you going to oh, see okay. impacts? How I about like it. once a day? Once a day, I'd be worried. Okay, you'd be worried. So like yeah. once a week? <laughs> I have friends I that know. drink soy latte, so I'm like wondering. Once I a suppose, week is fine. I suppose if you're, having a, if you're having a soy latte once a week, just have a look at the other estrogenics that you're exposed to. Exactly. Um, because if you are also, you know, exposed to the, which you'll hear in a sec, but if you're taking birth control or if you're not filtering your water or if you're doing these other things that are exposing you to these um, these chemicals, then you should be more concerned because having a soy latte, that's an easy change for you to minimize your risk and minimize your exposure to a potentially harmful chemical. Um, if you're having a soy latte once a week, okay, you're probably okay. But if you're having them every day, definitely try to like drink it black here and there. Well, no, that's good advice. That's the best advice is that if you're, if you're fairly vigilant and you're not just constantly being exposed to these plastics and these other chemicals we're going to talk about, then, you know, you don't have to worry about those accidental mm -hmm. exposures. You don't have to think about it so much.